So next chapter of A Boy and a Bear in a Boat, the comic. Lunchtime came and went, but there wasn't much lunch involved. The boy watched the horizon and waited for land to appear. It didn't, and he closed his eyes and counted to a hundred as slowly as he could, then opened them again. Still no sign. Then he closed his eyes, started to count to 200, got bored at 124 and opened them again. Still nothing. He reached under his feet, under his seat for the chocolate, but when he tugged at his bag it didn't move. He tugged harder but still it wouldn't budge so he got off the seat and crouched down to take a closer look. Some sort of booklet had got caught and crumpled up between the bag and the side of the boat and jammed in it into place. He took hold of the bag with one hand and pulled it sideways to make a little space, then worked the booklet free with the other hand. It was a comic. Brilliant. The boy loved comics. It wasn't one that he recognised and it was very badly creased, but that didn't matter. He laid it on the seat and did his best to flatten it out. Then he read it. Only he couldn't. What? Language is this, he said, flapping it about in frustration. He had only meant to say it to himself, but the bear looked at him. Oh, that, said the bear. I'm not sure. Get all sorts on board in my line of work, but never been any good with languages. Nice young fella, though. The chap that left it behind. The bear looked up and sideways, remembering. Nervous type, but very pleasant. Big tipper too, very generous, or else he didn't really understand our money properly, I'm not sure. Then he shook out the thoughtful crumples on his forehead, smiled broadly and began to sing again, back in his own happy world of growing and paying the boy no attention at all. The boy flicked quickly through the comic, hoping that he might be able to make out some of the story from the pictures alone, but it was no good. It seemed to be just one episode of a longer story, so it didn't have a proper end, beginning or ending. It was all just part of the middle. There was no way of knowing what had gone on before or what would happen after. And actually, the boy didn't have much of a clue about what was going on now. And here we have an example of that comic. There, you can see the different language that's been spoken. You can kind of tell the emotions on the faces though, can't you? And there we go, another one as well. Some clues about what's happening. It wasn't just that he didn't understand the words, although we did notice that R was spelled the same way. The pictures seemed foreign to him too. The drawings were weird, all angular and ugly and a little bit scary and the colours didn't fit inside the lines. He didn't like it at all, but he went through it a second time just the same. After all, he had nothing better to do. It still didn't make him it still didn't make much sense, but he did find a couple of bits quite exciting. Early on a young girl who seemed to be the heroine escaped from the clutches of an evil villain with a scary hairdo and a big black coat. On the last page, she was facing seemingly certain death at the claws of a gigantic slimy monster with a million teeth and, so far as a boy could make out, supernaturally bad breath. Most of what came in between, though, remained a mystery to him. He gave up on it. It was stupid. But he was careful not to get it creased again when he put it away next to his bag. <laughs>